The James Webb Telescope spotted it just outside of our solar system. James Webb Telescope just finally found urban lights four light years from Earth, an achievement that sent a pulse of exhilaration through observatories and research centers worldwide. The moment the data streamed back, revealing faint yet unmistakable patterns of illumination on the surface of a nearby exoplanet, it felt as though centuries of scientific yearning had crystallized into a single triumphant instant. For decades, astronomers had chased whispers of alien techno-signatures, variations in infrared flux, odd spectral lines hinting at artificial chemicals, periodic radio blips that refused to map onto any known celestial phenomenon. Now, at last, the glimmer of cityscapes across the yawning gulf of space was real, a testament to both human curiosity and the James Webb Telescope's unprecedented sensitivity. Before we start, Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more updates. Peering into the cosmic dark with its suite of infrared instruments, Webb had meticulously scanned Proxima Centauri b, a rocky world orbiting our nearest stellar neighbor. Previous observations had focused on atmospheric composition, searching for the telltale signatures of water vapor or methane. Yet on that pivotal observing run, a subtle yet consistent excess of mid-infrared light betrayed a source far too uniform and warm to be natural. Engineers and astronomers pored over calibration checks, reran algorithms, hunted for systematic errors. When every skeptic's doubt was finally laid to rest, the conclusion was inescapable. Points of light, arranged across the planetary disk with regularity and brightness patterns unlike any geological phenomenon, were shining from Proxima b's darkened hemisphere. The detection itself was a triumph of both persistence and technological innovation. Webb's mid-infrared instrument, MARI, honed to detect heat signatures down to the faintest thresholds, had delivered data so precise that individual zones of artificial luminescence could be mapped. The discovery hinged on advanced image processing techniques that subtracted the star's glare and isolated the planet's faint glow. Computational models had predicted that a civilization's nightside city lights would produce emission peaks around wavelengths of 10 microns, far from the realm of reflected starlight. When those peaks materialized in the processed spectral maps, disbelief gave way to jubilation. This was not a trick of optics or a quirk of data compression. This was proof that someone somewhere had built lights to banish the darkness of their own nights. Beyond the sheer thrill of finding extraterrestrial technology, the implications radiated outward into nearly every field of human inquiry. Astrophysicists celebrated a landmark test of planetary classification, Proxima b, long debated as a marginal candidate for habitability due to stellar flares and tidal locking, now hosted a civilization capable of overcoming environmental extremes. Climate scientists marveled at the energy infrastructure implied by such lights, how had that world's inhabitants balanced illumination with sustainability? Sociologists and philosophers speculated on the nature of societies that invest in the conspicuous display of urban radiance, while ethicists wondered what moral codes would govern interstellar observation and contact. The ripple effects stretched into considerations of cosmic sociology. According to the so-called Drake Equation, the probability of intelligent civilizations in our galaxy depends on factors like star formation rates, the fraction of planets that develop life, and the longevity of technological societies. Until now, estimates for the last factor were pure conjecture. But real-world evidence of a civilization that has persisted long enough to build urban landscapes visible four light years away provided both a floor and a ceiling for such estimates. It suggested that once life emerges on a temperate planet, Intelligence may thrive sufficiently to spark globally shared constructs like city grids, possibly on timescales shorter than those required to self-destruct. Indeed, a civilization's capability to produce urban lights hinted at energy mastery at industrial scales. On Earth, nighttime illumination is a conspicuous marker of development. Cities aglow with neon, streetlights tracing highways, the diffuse glow of suburban sprawl, for Proxima b, similar phenomena must exist. Vast networks of artificial infrastructure that convert stellar or geothermal energy into luminescence. Perhaps they harnessed advanced photovoltaics during their planet's long days, storing excess power in massive battery systems for nocturnal use. Or maybe they tapped into geothermal vents, channeling subsurface heat to sustain their urban glow. In either case, 
Such energy management speaks to a technological maturity that both parallels and surpasses our own. The very fact that these urban lights were detected at all underscored the importance of modern telescope design. The mirror segments of Webb, meticulously aligned and polished, granted a resolving power never before available in space-based observatories. Its sunshield allowed instruments to cool to near absolute zero, eliminating thermal noise that once obscured faint mid-infrared signals. Whereas earlier telescopes could only speculate about atmospheric biosignatures, Webb could resolve technosignatures, man-made traces, in worlds around other stars. This capability redefines the boundaries of attainable knowledge, opening the possibility of systematically mapping illuminated exoplanets within a dozen light years. Equally transformative was the collaborative ethos that propelled this discovery. Astronomers across continents shared observation proposals, divided time on the telescope, co-authored data reduction pipelines. Amateur astronomers contributed by monitoring Proxima Centauri's flare activity, ensuring web observations were timed to avoid stellar interference. Data scientists in Silicon Valley offered machine learning algorithms to distinguish genuine signals from cosmic ray noise. Even private space firms donated computational resources to process terabytes of imagery. It was a reminder that the quest to understand our place in the universe transcends national borders and corporate interests, weaving together a tapestry of global ingenuity. Yet amidst the celebration, profound questions took shape. How old was the civilization behind those lights? Proxima b is roughly 4 billion years into its stellar lifespan, and if life began soon after planetary formation, intelligent life might have evolved on a timescale comparable to Earth's. But the brightness and extent of the light suggested a sprawling network of settled areas, cities perhaps with millions of inhabitants. Such scale implied centuries, if not millennia, of development beyond mere hunter-gatherer beginnings. Did this civilization weather existential challenges, climate shifts, resource depletion, conflict, before lighting up their world? Or did an enlightened social structure guide them to stability earlier in their history? The sheer novelty of confirmed urban lights on another world also propelled debates in philosophy and theology. For centuries, humans grappled with the idea of solitary existence in the cosmos. From Copernicus to Galileo to the modern era, each major shift in perspective loosened our geocentric hubris. Now, with evidence of neighbors in the cosmic dark, questions about meaning, purpose, and destiny regained urgency. Theological scholars pondered whether ancient doctrines had ever anticipated brethren beyond Earth. Philosophers revisited notions of moral obligation, pondering whether humanity might owe a cosmic welcome to this distant society, or proceed cautiously, mindful of contamination and cultural imperialism. Finding lights four light years away also redefined strategies for future exploration. Robotic probes, previously considered the primary means for detailed study, would now need to navigate potential diplomatic protocols. If a civilization shines lights into the void, they may also be watching for visitors. How would they interpret an approaching craft? What messages, if any, should humanity send? Efforts to design interstellar ambassadors gained fresh urgency. Symbolic artifacts, mathematical treatises, cultural compendia, the optics and radio teams began drafting new protocols, aiming to broadcast greetings only after rigorous risk assessments. Concurrently, the discovery rekindled debates on planetary protection and contamination. On Earth, strict protocols govern spacecraft that land on bodies like Mars or Europa, preventing backward and forward contamination. But what about long-distance observation? Could intense laser-based communication or probing neutrino beams inadvertently disturb an alien ecosystem? Some scientists caution that shining our own lights, metaphorically or literally, into the cosmos might be akin to tossing a pebble into a pond whose ripples we do not fully understand. Others countered that passive observation has already irrevocably changed the universe. The act of seeing alters both the seen and the seer. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on James Webb's discovery? Civilization out there or something else? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.